Bitcoin is finally waking up. And that bullish end-of-year scenario we've been expecting finally looks like it could be within reach. Volatility is heating up, short-term holders are defending their positions, and price discovery is quietly stretching into uncharted territory. So in this video, we're diving deep into the indicators and signals that reveal where Bitcoin could likely be headed next, and why the next move might happen faster than you think. So let's get into it. Bitcoin recently entered price discovery once again, and this isn't the first time this cycle we pushed into uncharted territory, but this one feels a little different. It's been choppy, and not kind of the vertical euphoric breakout we saw back in November 2024, or at the peak of the last bull cycle. Instead, what we're seeing now looks more like an extended build-up, a tightening coil before a potential decisive move. But let's quickly start by talking about what price discovery really means and how I'm actually tracking it. This indicator here is designed to quantify and visualize exactly how far Bitcoin is extended into all time highs, essentially, how deep we are into the price discovery phase beyond any prior historical level. It looks at the highest price Bitcoin has ever traded, the all time high, and then measures in percentage terms how far above the previous high we currently are. And each time Bitcoin sets a new all time high, the indicator resets and begins tracking how much higher we go from there. If we're above the previous all-time high, it calculates the percentage move in discovery, and if we're below, it stays at zero. The colour transitions from light red to deep red as the magnitude of price discovery grows, creating a visual map for how extreme each case becomes. And the idea here is simple but powerful. When Bitcoin enters price discovery, there's no previous structure to lean on, no resistance, no historical supply, and it's a pure reflection of the demand versus euphoria. And the clustering of these signals helps us contextualise where we are, or whether we're in completely overheated territory. And right now we can see that this expansion has been modest. We've nudged into new highs, but we haven't yet seen the vertical clustering acceleration that defines full-blown price discovery. And what I'm watching for here is that clean, sustained break to the upside, where all of those dark red signals cluster together, which is something that would confirm a strong demand is back and that we're ready for a serious leg higher. Another metric that's flashing interesting signals right now is the volatility fractals indicator. And this one looks at the fractal structure of volatility, or in other words, it tracks the rhythm and intensity of volatility waves across different time frames to gauge how much energy is building up under the surface. And recently we've seen a nice little spike on this metric, getting close to the 20 mark during the latest rally. And that's good to see, because it means the market is starting to wake up again. We actually called this a week or so ago, saying that a burst of volatility was actually overdue, and it's exactly what we started to get. But what I'm still looking for are those readings that break into the 30s on this metric. And historically, when the volatility fractals push into that range, it tends to coincide with explosive upside or downside follow-through, the type of energy that reignites the runaway phase of bull runs. But so far the signal looks promising, but it hasn't fully broken out yet. So if we can sustain another leg of momentum with volatility continuing to expand, that's when things could really start accelerating. Now let's take a look at some short-term structure. If we look back at the previous 120 days of price action, which is roughly the last four months, we can use the local volume profile to visualise where the heaviest trading activity has taken place. Now this tool maps out just how much volume has been transacted at each price level, effectively showing us the market's centre of gravity as such. And what stands out right now is the point of control, which is the level with the highest trading volume in that period, and it's currently sitting at around $117,000. And that's a very key structural level. If we were to pull back from here, that's exactly where I'd expect the market to find strong support, a kind of volume shelf where both buyers and sellers previously agreed on value. It's an area that often gets retested before the next impulsive move higher. So if we do get a correction in the near term, I'd be watching for price to potentially revisit that zone. It would be a healthy consolidation, a backtest of prior acceptance before the next wave of expansion. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I love watching short-term holders, which, for those who aren't aware, are holders that have previously moved their coins within the last 155 days or less. 
They're some of the most informative on-chain cohorts because their behavior tends to give excellent counter-trend signals. They're very reactive, but not random at all. And when they're capitulating, it often marks exhaustion at the bottom. And when they're over-exuberant, it often signals a top is near. Now, if we dig into my short-term holder cost bands, which is one of my favorite frameworks for assessing where short-term participants are positioned relative to price, we can see the indicator plots the short-term holder realized price in white, which is the average cost basis of coins moved within the past 155 days. And then from that foundation, it plots multiple valuation bands derived from that price. The lower green zone here represents an area of deep value, a point where Bitcoin tends to be heavily undervalued relative to the average short-term holder. And the middle white band marks the equilibrium point, where price and cost are roughly in balance. And the upper yellow, orange and red zones show increasing degrees of overheating, regions where short-term holders are sitting on larger and larger unrealized profits, and the risk of distribution rises sharply. Now, what's particularly interesting is how well the bulls have defended the short-term holder realized price this cycle. We bounced straight off it recently, and that's a stronger response than we've seen in previous tests of it over the past couple of years. It shows buyers are stepping in right where they should, defending the cost bases with conviction. And that's a perfect bull market sentiment indicator. It tells me that short-term conviction hasn't broken down. These holders are still believing in higher prices. And the next key level I want to see claimed is the orange cost band, which begins at around $141,000. And that's where the next meaningful test for the bulls lies. If price can establish above that region, it would signal short-term holders are once again in profit territory. And that's historically where momentum tends to build rapidly. And honestly, I don't think it will take as long as most people think to reach that zone. With enough market energy, it could happen very fast. Now let's take that same idea, short-term holder valuation, and look at it through a statistical lens. The short-term holder MVRV is built on the same underlying logic as the classic, famous MVRV, which compares the current market value to the realized value, or in other words, how much unrealized profits the average investor is sitting on. But in this case, instead of simply just measuring this raw value, we can incorporate standard deviation analysis to measure how extreme these deviations are statistically. In plain terms, we're not just looking at whether short-term holders are in profit or loss, we're quantifying how far those profit or losses deviate from historical norms. The pink sigma bands overlaid here represent plus three to plus four standard deviations on this metric, which are points of extreme deviation. And that is territory that has a very low probability of sustainability without a meaningful correction. At the moment, that plus three sigma level, which is the lighter pink color, sits at around $150,000. And I classify that as the overstretch zone for the remainder of this year an area where statistically Bitcoin becomes highly extended relative to short-term holder fair value. And if we were to reach that region, I'd expect at least a decent level of cooling off or an extended consolidation to happen. But before that though, I think there's room for acceleration. And with enough volume coming in, we could easily see a strong thrust through the $130,000 range. The key region for me to watch right now is between $140,000 and $150,000 because that's where both the upper cost bands and the plus three sigma statistical boundary converge. It's where on-chain and market structure meet, and it's likely where this next leg could pause for a while, even if it's only temporary. But what all this tells me is that we're transitioning from a consolidation-driven environment into one where discovery could soon accelerate. Bitcoin structure remains solid, buyers are defending logical zones, volatility is reawakening, and liquidity is positioned for an upside break. But as always, price discovery doesn't mean straight lines. Markets breathe, and in this phase, sharp pullbacks can still happen as liquidity thins above all-time highs. The difference now is that the underlying foundation looks far healthier than in previous highs. We're seeing constructive defence from short-term holders, rising volatility, and a clear absorption of selling pressure near $117,000. So if those conditions persist it sets the stage for that next definitive push, the kind that could take us from a cautious breakout into full-scale discovery mode, which I think a lot of people are expecting for Q4 of this year. So for now, I'm watching the volatility fractals for that next leg above 30, and the 117k level as a weighted support. And eventually, and hopefully, 
the $140,000 to $150,000 band as the next upper target zone where I'd consider reducing my exposure. If we can sustain momentum through this area, then we're likely looking at the true start of the next major expansion phase. So to wrap things up, what we're seeing right now is that Bitcoin is quietly moving into price discovery again. We've nudged into new all-time highs, and while it hasn't been that explosive vertical move yet, the foundation is definitely building. It's that early stage discovery phase where demand is starting to assert itself, but we're not yet in the euphoric no resistance territory that defines a full-blown breakout. And at the same time, the underlying energy in the market is starting to show up in the charts. The volatility fractals are spiking, and the local volume profile tells us that 117k is a very meaningful support level, a place where prior trading activity concentrated and where buyers are stepping in. And that combination of eventual rising volatility and the structural support gives us a strong framework for anticipating the next leg higher, if the momentum continues. And finally, when we look at short-term holders, both the cost bands and the MVRV provide a clear map for potential resistances. Those upper zones that are currently sitting at around 140 to 150k are where short-term profits become significant and historically where distribution pressure starts to appear. And that definitely doesn't mean the bull run stops there, but it does signal that an acceleration through those levels will need seriously strong volume and conviction, or even a potential pinch of FOMO. But overall, to me, it's painting a picture of a market that's in uncharted territory, but still poised and respecting its natural thresholds. And that highlights that it's a market that's active and balanced and probably ready to reveal its next move. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live. Built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.